Yes, yes, they came here. Do it now. Do it... No, no, they're good people. I, I like talking to them. You hate them. You can't stand them. You only do it for the views. Kill them. Rip their innards out. No, no, you, you are one of us now. What, one of who? <laughs> Listen now and learn. <laughs> Starting off with the first serial killer in Fallout 4, we have the Fens Phantom. This is a man from before the Great War who claimed dozens and dozens of lives. In fact, he was infamous for his use of chalk. Whenever he killed someone, he would draw a white X in chalk right next to their body or bodies, depending on how many people he murdered at one time. When you go inside the Fen Street sewer, and this is very close to Diamond City, you'll see that this was sort of his hideout. It's here he displayed the bodies of some of his most horrible killings, and often in really sick positions, like the person fishing for their own head, uh, the person's head and arms being served like a barbecue, the person in the doghouse with a dog collar on, feeding out of the bowl, so clearly this was a very psychopathic and disturbing man. Now, I say man because if you listen to his holotapes, he certainly sounds like a male with a very deep voice. Um, we can't be entirely sure if that was his natural voice or, you know, if he was using some kind of modulator. And we also don't have any more details on his physical features. So because of that, it's very likely that he was never caught. Um, there was a detective who had been lured to coming down into a sewer. And as you listen to the tapes, it actually chronicles this person going deeper into this labyrinth. And the Phantom is really excited to finally meet them. But when you get to the fourth and final tape, he talks about how he had to kill the detective because they apparently attacked him first. Now, because of this, there are actually a few theories that no, like I said, he was never caught, but he at least died down here in the sewer. So, for example, as you're leaving this place, there's this, like, small alcove you can jump in uh, where you see a bed with two skeletons on it. It looks like there's a male and a female with a machete and a piece of chalk right next to them. So the idea is that the detective was a female. He killed her with a machete and being wounded during their fight, he knew he was going to die, so he wrote his final two X's of the both of them on that wall. That's fine. Personally, though, I, I can't say I'm wild about that idea. There's another theory that he is the glowing one that you encounter in one of the last rooms there. Um, that, you know, he was never caught, but he was turned into a ghoul when the bombs fell. I definitely like this theory a lot more. It, it makes me feel like I'm inflicting, I don't know, some kind of retribution for all of those poor people. But whichever theory you do like the most and you go with, we can sleep easier knowing that he is no longer a threat. Um, I think. Number three, we have the Nuka Killer. Unlike the last one, this person didn't leave behind holotapes of them talking, so we can't be sure if they were a male or a female, but they too were alive before the Great War. They got that nickname, Nuka Killer, because after every person they killed, they would stick a bottle cap in each of the person's eye sockets. And th this is very evocative of what the ancient Greeks did when they put pennies on the eyes of the dead, and or maybe one in their mouths, and this was to grant them access to the ferry on the river Styx that would take them to the world of the dead. So it's very possible that the Nuka Killer took this as sort of an inspiration and then modified it for, you know, their own sick uh, insignia. Another interesting thing here is that the clothes of each of this killer's victims all have heavy water damage. You know, whenever a body shows up as having those bottle caps in the eyes, their outfits are also waterlogged. And you can learn all of this because there are three separate terminals in the game that mention this killer and the person they killed. So, for example, there's um there's one in the Nayant Sheriff's Department giving details on one of the victims, a man named Gonzalez. There's another at the East Boston Police Station covering a man named Yavitz. And there's another one at the Coast Guard Pier talking about a Coast Guard known as Ensign Wright. And again, each case explains it's got the bottle caps in the eyes and waterlogged clothing. So again, if we go back to the Greek mythology, maybe the Nuka Killer is using even more inspiration than just the pennies. We know that the River Styx leads to the underworld. So maybe this person murdering their victims in water, or at least dragging their bodies into water after they've been killed, that's somehow a metaphor that their souls fell off the ferry. They fell into the river and never made it into the underworld, and now their souls are doomed to just drift for an eternity, never able to be given judgment. 
this is, of course, just speculation. Um, a lot of people thought that with the Nuka World DLC, more information would come out on this person, but it looks like nothing else is mentioned. Uh, it's just these three terminal entries in the base game, and it's certainly possible that they killed more than just three people, but these are the only cases that have been recorded. Luckily, just like the Fence Phantom, this person is already long dead, or they're a ghoul, and in that case, you may have already killed them in your travels. Hope. Number two, we have the pint-sized slasher, and this one is actually just a reference. Um, if you did play Fallout 3 and you did the simulation in Vault 112, you will know exactly who I'm talking about. The pint-sized slasher was a child serial killer who wore this creepy clown mask, um, a black and white striped shirt with jeans, and always murdered people with a kitchen knife. Legend has it, once it got dark, he would crawl out of a dog kennel and then go on this wild killing spree. It's pretty disturbing stuff. Now, again, in Fallout 3, you can actually play him in that simulation that I was talking about. Nothing like that in Fallout 4. However, there is a reference to him. If you go to Parsons State Insane Asylum, there's a terminal called Jack's Office Terminal, and if you read the patient records, there's an entry that talks about a Bobby Smith admitted at the age of 10 years old due to multiple homicides, all caused by stabbing. He happily admits to his crimes. His family, who is local, refuses to visit because of just how messed up he is. All of these details very closely relate to the pint-sized slasher. It seems that this kid, he was no myth. At some point, he was brought to this very asylum because of how evil he was. Only being locked up could contain such a monster like this. Now, the details get a little fuzzy because uh, we can't really be sure if he was brought here after all of those killings and then eventually died here, or, say, he killed people in Boston, was then brought here, managed to escape, went to DC, and then continued his rampage over there in the Capital Wasteland. That's how people over there even know about him. I I'm actually inclined to believe the latter, and, and if that is true, that is very, very disturbing. It would seem that Jack Cabot was not able to withhold just everyone. And number one, we have Pikmin. He's the only serial killer who is not just mentioned, but you can actually encounter in the game. You can find him at Pikmin Gallery in the northeast of Boston, and much like number four, there's this long labyrinth that you have to go through before reaching him. However, you're not so much a detective, and he's not so much anticipating your arrival. In fact, you might just save his life, but that's what makes him such an interesting character, is that you might actually have to debate whether you do or don't save his life. Yes, he's very disturbing. He experiments on human bodies and uses their blood to paint grotesque pictures like bleeding hearts and arms like tentacles coming out of fiery inferno, and he considers himself an artist because of all this work, but he still only kills raiders, well, at least as far as we can tell. That's something you do yourself perhaps much more than him. So when you finally get to him and he's being attacked by raiders, it really does pose the question, who's the real serial killer here? Are you about to wipe them all out or spare his life? Personally, I always kill him because, like, how long does it take before he gets bored of killing raiders and then for, I don't know, artistic enlightenment feels that he has to move on to innocent lives? However, if you do spare him, he'll turn it back around on you and leads you to the note that says, Thanks, killer. So, perhaps I should be putting you on my list. And there you have it, all serial killers in Fallout 4. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me, why won't you die already? No, they stayed for this long in the video. I told you they were nice. <laughs> You'll make a wonderful piece to my collection. <laughs>